Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Laura. Welcome to Where Work Meets Life. Today, I have an exciting episode on philanthropy through fashion, purpose, planet, and people. So a very, very interesting and timely topic. And one of the things that I love about my journey is getting to meet incredible people all over the world. And I had the honor of being at South by Southwest this year, and I met an inspiring person there, Doug McLean, who has a lot of experience in private equity and finance, but he really wanted to make a difference in the sustainable fashion industry and have a more purpose uh, created business. So he co-founded Troon and Troon is something we're going to learn about uh, which focuses on purpose and philanthropy in the fashion industry. Doug introduced me uh, to his co-founder, the president and chief creative officer of Troon, Randy Seif, uh, who's here on the podcast today to discuss uh, this very impactful social enterprise. So a couple of things about Randy. Um, that are of interest is that she's a creative and a strategist all in one with 30 plus years in the fashion and lifestyle industry. She specializes in design, branding, product development, but what makes her unique is she's all about purpose driven brands from concept all the way to completion. And she's very good at leveraging collaborations uh, for product innovation. So she creates strategic partnerships all over the world, and she works with empathy, entrepreneurial spirit, and imagination. I hope I do the same. That sounds like some, some way that I'd like to describe myself. So I really admire what you're doing, Randy. Um, I love how that you bring brands to life, you create personality for brands, but most importantly, you create a triple win for people, planet, and profit. Welcome to the podcast, Randy. Well, thank you so much, Laura, and thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So where are you located today? I am in New York City. Excellent. Is it a beautiful day in New York? Um, it's kind of a rainy day today, to be honest. Uh, we're expecting rain all week long, so that's our start of summer. But you probably needed it, I'm guessing? <laughs> we did. We did. It's good. It's, it's all good. <laughs> lovely, lovely. So tell us a bit more about what inspired you, Randy, to focus on the purpose-driven work that you're doing with Troon. So I had been working for many years in the fashion industry for different companies, working on different products and, and mostly in the design and product development area. And I became very underwhelmed with the industry. We had to create a new collection every season and every collection that's the new season was not that different from the season before. And so there was so much waste in my mind being created. And I became very frustrated. And also I was frustrated because the industry likes to box you in. They like you to be all design or all marketing or all production. And what I enjoy is the entire big picture of a brand going from concept to that final execution and every step in between. And so I made the decision to go out on my own and formed my own company. And this allowed me to do just that. And then fast forward a little bit and I was contacted by someone who wanted to start a lifestyle brand. And his concept was that we should all be loving and kind. And his business model was such that a portion of the proceeds of every product um, donated to a charity. And so we created a series of branded messages which were graphically applied to all these lifestyle products about love and kindness and healing the planet and making the world a better place. And in sourcing these various products, um, I met some amazing people for potential collaborations and partnerships, which I absolutely loved. And in researching these different charities that we would work with, it kind of opened my eyes to that, how much good was already being done by people in the world. And it was like a switch flipped for me. And ever since that day, that experience really had a profound effect on me. Um, I try to whatever project I'm involved in, 
um, always see a bigger purpose behind it and align the project with a component of social good. And this really ends up inflating the brand too, because people will align with brands that they feel share the same values that they do. And this ends up being a win-win for all, for people and planet. And then fast forward again to when I met Doug, um, it was during COVID, um, about 2021, of course, so we were on Zoom, and he shared with me his philanthropy through fashion vision, and it ticked all of my boxes. Um, and of course, we've evolved it a lot since then. Uh, we sit at the intersection of philanthropy, sustainability, uh, technology, and luxury fashion, and we built a team, and here we are. <laughs> that is just so inspiring. I'm just so grateful to be able to talk about this brand and I think whether it's fashion or other industries the more that we can do to give back to people and planet I think the better better off we are in so many ways so thank you for seeing the positivity that's going on out there and supporting charities that are doing that good work but but need the funding Yes, yes, we all need that. <laughs> we, all. we all need funding. And in the end, what really strikes me is it's a business, but it's a business that's focused on giving back through every single garment sold. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, and we try and do that really with every single touch point. Um, it's kind of um, how we approach everything that we do um, and at every touch point. So First, early on, we made the decision uh, to become a public benefit corporation. And this kind of acts as an anchor for us and to meet certain levels of accountability and transparency. We're also looking to obtaining our, uh, in the process of obtaining, I should say, our B Corps certification. Um, but we really, we really look at sustainability um, as it's the lens through which we look at everything you know, from product development through our overall company operations. It really is the North Star for everything. That's that's just wonderful. So again, very values and purpose driven. And I was really surprised, but actually not surprised when I talked to you about the amount of waste in the fashion industry. But when you think about it, how many clothes go unsold and how many people buy things and don't wear them very often. I mean, there's so much that goes into producing these these garments, right? No, there is. And there's a there's a crazy statistic that kind of proves the point how the system is broken. Um, there's like 150 billion ready to wear garments sold annually. And only 25% of that is sold at full price. 45% is sold on sale and 30% goes unsold. And that 30% can end up in a landfill. And there's a stat I read recently, there's something like 92 million tons of um, clothing worldwide that heads to these landfills from that unsold uh, production. And to me, that's really sad given that there's also a lot of people who, in the world who can't afford clothing. <laughs> so it's just such a disconnect. Yeah, it's really, um, the system is really broken and this is how we feel that we offer a solution. Um, we really wanna serve as a lighthouse for other fashion companies to follow as to the future of manufacturing and the future for the fashion industry. I, I love that that goal and that ambition, and I, I see you already achieving that. And can you tell us anything else about how you innovate with purpose? Anything else we need to know that might be interesting about how that works in the fashion industry? Well, we, we have baked this into our process, into every aspect. Um, First of all, it's in our product development process. It's in our raw material selection. It's in our um, aligning with different strategic partners and manufacturing partners that share the same values that we do. Um, and our made to measure model unto itself um, is a more sustainable way to work. Uh, we only make, it's, it's made to order and made to measure. So we only make 
what is ordered. We don't have any inventory. So there is zero waste in that regard. There is zero going to a landfill. There is zero going on sale because we have no inventory. So, and the other thing is we make in our customers own body measurements. And so this unto itself will decrease the amount of returns that uh, happen. It's, it's a known fact that 30% of all garments made get returned and 70% of those returns are due to the garment not fitting. But we are actually making it in the customer's own body measurements. And so the chances that that 70% stat will go way down, um, which then translate into less shipping, right? Less, sh let, less packaging, less shipping, less carbon emissions. And so it's, it's like a domino effect. Yeah, and people don't realize that, that the, the emissions come from everything from the packaging to the actual shipping, whether it's, you know, by flight, by, you know, train, whatever. Like, there's so much energy that goes into getting something from A to B to C to D, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And also in our product innovation, um, we use our own, we, we treat the planet as a stakeholder, really. And we develop our own proprietary materials with circularity as a key driver in the design process. So we, um, we create our own fabrics only using natural fibers that can be returned to the earth. Um, so we keep that circularity going. Um, also, we have a renewed life platform for our baseball hats, which continuing our commitment to sustainability, we only use dead stock designer fabrics for these hats, um, which gives them that renewed life. Um, and we have programs like this. It's just how we look at everything and, and attack each touch point separately and what we can do to disrupt and do things differently. Sounds fascinating. And to someone who's not in the fashion industry, um, I, I used to love drawing fashion growing up, actually, but I'd say I know very little about textiles. <laughs> but when you say what dead, so d materials, yeah, what is that? When ma manufacturers at the end of their season, their inventory is all made, there's usually fabric left over. And that fabric is called dead stock. So instead of sending that dead stock to a landfill, um, a company like ours can purchase it and we can then re repurpose it to use into new product. So you're keeping that cycle going. It's, it's, it's a circular system as opposed to a linear system. And we, we're using designer dead stock fabric to create our baseball hats. Right. And I remember reading about, you know, the materials you sent me on how it's from farm to fiber to fashion, and then it would be the fashion going back to the land eventually. Is that right? Yes, exactly. So that is um, really how we engage with our customer is we'll have digital IDs like QR codes inside every garment. And when they scan that QR code, it will tell that story of that garment and how it went from farm to fiber to fashion, because we are creating the garment from scratch, really those proprietary fabrics and raw materials we're making from, we're not just going to a mill and buying fabric. We are creating it, we're sourcing the yarn, we're having it knit and we're making it for, for ourselves and having also that point of differentiation in the market from what other brands are using and running because this is our own creation in a new in new blends that maybe have not been seen before so we're very excited about that um, and even the way that we package our garments um, we're using a next gen material uh, that's made out of seaweed in a new technology. Um, so the packaging is literally meant to disappear. It, it will just disappear. Um, so we will not be adding any environmental impact. This is so incredible. What you're doing is really something to be 
proud of and to share as, as widely as possible. Because again, I think it can be used in other products and industries from toys to who knows to um, to recreational items like I could just see it being this concept applying across different uh, industries. Um, yeah, it, it goes back to um, using that sustainability as a lens through which you look look at through ev look at everything through that lens and sustainability for for me um, it, it, it's a vehicle for product innovation and value creation. And you, that can be applied to any industry, certainly. If you look at every touch point and try and kind of think how you can do this differently, just because it's been done that way for a zillion years doesn't mean that's the right way for now. As we have learned with the fashion system right now, that we know the industry is broken um, and we're slowly but surely uh, spreading the word to get other companies on board. And, and for larger companies, it's much more difficult because they have so many more layers of people to go through and their supply chain is so developed. But for a company like us, young, just starting out, we're agile, we can respond quick and pivot to what's working. And so it's, a, it's actually a really exciting time uh, to, be, to be coming out with something new and kind of leading the way as a vehicle of change for our industry. That's a great way of putting it. Troon is different because it's a vehicle of, of change and a, and a lighthouse uh, in your industry, uh, which is, is fabulous. And I know one of the things that you do, Randy, is sponsor large scale events and artist collaborations. Tell us what that's like in your world. So that's the other part of our business model is uh, we align with different foundations and charities on a quarterly basis and we sponsor large scale events and artist collaborations through the sale of our luxury collections. Um, and so this is how we turn uh, purpose into impact. Um, we donate and bring awareness to these foundations and charities that we align with through live events. Um, and last year we did two live events. Uh, we did one for London Sustainable Fashion Week, where we had an, our artist flew over to London, our resident artist, Kareel Jeliaskav, he's amazing. And um, we did a collaboration and fashion show with a um, charity around women refugees. And so we, um, he actually, it was the women refugees that were walking down the runway for the, for the show, for the fashion show, and they wore our sneakers. And he had them each dip their feet into a different color of paint before they walked down the runway. And so when they did, their feet made different color impressions of their footprints. And it was sort of like them taking a new leap, a new walk to life um, and symbolizing that. And then they, in, and then Kareel brilliantly cut up the runway and they auctioned it off to, with all proceeds going to the charity, which was amazing. That is so creative. It's just, I'm just smiling because I just really admire creative endeavors like that and ideas. I'm, I'm an ideas person, but did you raise a lot of money for the refugee women through selling those? Were people generous? We raised some. We we raised some. Um, I don't know the exact amount to be honest, but but um, it was also about bringing awareness to that and going forward. Um, they they were a new charity, and going forward, it gave sort of them the springboard to to leap and and evolve to more. And we did a second in, event in October, uh, which was around the Formula One weekend in Austin, Texas. And again, we aligned with a charity around mental health because October was mental health month. Um, we had a fashion show. We did an artist collaboration and auctioned off some art. And this was really to introduce Troon and our basic product, um, our signature capsule, which is what we do for these foundations and charities. We can design separate um, collections for them to market. 
um, which brings them revenue and awareness. So it's not just the event, it's also the clothing itself. Wonderful. And I always, I like to think it's about awareness leads to acceptance. I credit one of my friends with this awareness to acceptance, and then that leads to action. So the more that we can raise awareness for these causes and charities that to accept that there are these real problems in certain areas we might not know. Sex trafficking is one of them that I've really tried to raise awareness that it happens in our own city and in our own neighborhoods. But once we get that, then we can drive people to action. And, and that's what Troon is trying to do across different charitable causes. And we have four main impact areas that is how we kind of select the charities and foundations to align with around soil and land health, around our oceans, around wildlife, and around humanitarian. And so within those four impact areas is, is how we um, break it down quarterly and uh, bring these bring awareness and donations to these great causes. Beautiful. Which ones are coming up that you're most excited about? Can you share one or two? <laughs> sure. So we have an event coming up in September, which is around um, with an international film festival. And it is for um, wildlife protection biodiversity loss and climate action and creating, creating meaningful impact within all of those areas. Um, and secondly, we have another uh, co artist collaboration and fashion component in December, um, which will be at Art Basel in, in Miami. Wow, so you're getting all over the place, all over the world for these events. And there's no telling what the next one will be because you your pillars or your your areas of focus are are quite broad, which makes it more interesting to, to see where this can go in terms of charities. Yes, certainly. Uh, really, anything can fit within those four buckets. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's great and it's great to be a part of it. What a difference you're making and you're going to make. I just see this getting more and more impactful as time goes on because uh, it comes from a place of, of very, very strong values. Yes, definitely. Wonderful. So uh, what's been the biggest challenge that you faced, Randy, in your work with Troon and how have you overcome it? So um, as I said, we started during COVID. Um, and so that was, uh, you know, trying to source products um, and create products while there's a <laughs> worldwide pandemic going on um, was not easy. And so things took a lot longer in the supply chain or to even get answers to certain things. You know, early on, we put our stake in the ground around hemp because hemp is one of the most sustainable fibers out there. And we really ran into a problem sourcing the hemp. Um, there, there was a worldwide shortage at that time. Um, and so it, it was very problematic because it was really our starting point. And so um, eventually, uh, after a long, long time, uh, we, did, we finally got it, but um, it, that took a while. Uh, so that that was challenging. No kidding, but you persisted and now you have uh, hemp at your disposal. <laughs> oh, yes. Lovely. Okay, so um, I'm curious how we can order your products in different places in the world. And I'm coming from Canada. Uh, I, I wonder at what point you're going to be able to ship here or are you already? We are launching in in this fall. And after we launch, everything is, will be sold on our web, website, truenhouse.com. And you'll be able to come on our website. You'll select a style. We will capture your body measurements, either by you taking two pictures with your phone or for those customers that don't want to take those two pictures, it's a front view and a side view. Um, we will ask you a series of like five questions. You answer those questions. And then from there, the algorithm of our technology partners uh, figures out your body measurements based on like the 120 million data points that we have. This is all within less than a minute. Um, you pick your style. Um, you'll have some design options within that style. 
so for customization, for example, if it's a t-shirt, you'll have a neckline detail or uh, on the bottom, if it has a vent or not a vent, or maybe a sleeve detail. And then you'll see a 3D simulation of your selection. This is, again, all within a minute. And then it kind of goes to the back end, right to our factory, right to the machine, actually, that is going to cut the fabric and where it will get made and shipped within two weeks. So all of that to say, you can do it all on our website in less than a minute. Beautiful. And it's it's lifestyle types of, of clothing. So is it more casual? Are there dresses? I love dresses. Like what what do you have going on? No dresses yet, um, but it's everyday luxury essentials. So it's your t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, joggers, um, sneakers, baseball caps, but in super luxurious fabrics for the clothing and in echo made leather for the sneakers. And as I said, dead stock for the baseball hats. Um, and these garments are much more sophisticated and um, a much higher level of product than a typical t-shirt or sweatshirt. We have really uh, created um, brand identifiers in the designs of them, which are quite sophisticated. And we have uh, strategically placed fabric manipulations within the garments that kind of take them to another level. And that might sound confusing. I can see your face, <laughs> but it is something that um, it, it, this is where our point of differentiation is in the actual design of the product. So as I said, we look at every touch point and try and be different. This is how we're being different in our design. So they'll have a unique look and feel. Yeah, you will be able to look at these and know it's a Troon garment. That is so cool. I can't wait to get my hands on, on them. I honestly, you know, I love good quality garments because I don't have a lot of time to shop and I'd rather have garments that can last me a number of years. So I'm guessing that these last, they, they wear well, they, they wash well. They, wa they will be machine washable, yes. And, you know, that's the whole thing about having a little more sustainable mindset these days is to get a longer wear out of your garments. So people are, are able to pay a little more because it will last them longer. And they don't need as much as they ha always had, as we always were told we needed to have in the past, right? We really don't need as much as we've all had. Um, so it, it's it's getting more for for less. So your website again is is the best place to order. When will it be available? Remind us and remind us of the link. It will be truenhouse.com, t r e u n house.com. It will be this fall. We don't have the exact date yet, but stay tuned. Okay, and we'll include this all in the show notes uh, for everybody, as well as the blog and my monthly e-newsletter for Where Work Meets Life. So we'll share this as much as possible. So my next question is, what do you read and listen to for your own growth and development uh, and inspiration, Randy? Actually, I just started a book, which is fantastic, called Tough Titties, believe it or not. And it's by um, a friend of mine, Laura Bell Gray, and she just gives everyone a permission slip to be yourself and screw up as much as you want. It doesn't matter. And it's all OK. And she's hilarious. And you will laugh out loud. But aside from that, in, for more work, um, well, that is work, too, because it does allow you to be your authentic self. Um, I personally love the quotes by Seth Godin. And I get his emails every day, which are excerpts from his blog. And he just has these fantastic nuggets of quick, inspirational um, facts about anything in business. And you just read that and say, that was so simple. Why didn't I think of that? Beautiful. We will share both of those as well in the show notes. And we really appreciate you and all you bring to the world. My final question, Randy, as we wrap up is if you could have one wish for a better world, uh, what would it be? 
I'm going to go back to the first story I told you at the beginning of this um, session, and that is for people to be happy with themselves, because when people are happy, they're more kind and more considerate and respectful of others. And if you really um, if you really like what you do, you can be happy and be proud of the work that you're doing. And again, kindness for everyone. Yes, kindness matters. And there's far too much, uh, I think, anger and, and judgment versus kindness and, and love and, and gratitude. And with that, I am grateful for our time together. I'm grateful that Doug McLean introduced us. And I'm excited to be able to do my part in, in sharing this and inspiring others to do these interesting innovations and know that business doesn't always have to be the same way it's been done before, that there's so much room to improve the how and the who and the what and the when of, of how we create and market and, and build and sell whatever it is that we're doing. That's right. And, and, it's, and that's where innovation comes from. When you really have to stretch those muscles and do things differently, that's where innovation comes out of. And we are in a time right now where there's innovation everywhere in technology, um, in sustainability through technology, um, and in, in everything that we see every day, really. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you so much uh, for being on Where Work Meets Life today, Randy. And I, I hope that everybody stays well. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Where Work Meets Life. If you enjoyed this content, please rate and review the podcast as that helps me get it out to more people. Visit my website at drlaura.live and sign up for my monthly e-newsletter full of tips and resources. Please engage with us on social media and check out the podcast summary for links to my psychology practices Canada Career Counseling, Calgary Career Counseling, and Synthesis Psychology. Stay well.